Live from Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the Cube covering KubeCon and Cloud Native Con Europe 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Copenhagen, Denmark. It's theCUBE's exclusive coverage of KubeCon 2018 Europe. I'm John Furrier with Lauren Cooney, my co-host this week. Our next guest is Shiv Ramji, VP of Product at DigitalOcean. Fast growing startup now, growing company. Congratulations, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. So you guys got some hard news. You got um, product, Kubernetes product, and you guys just upgraded your status on CNCF. Let's jump into the product news real quick. What's the, what's the hard news? Yeah, so we just announced a Kubernetes product uh, and service uh, on our platform, and um, you know we've had a lot of customers who actually have been deploying Kubernetes uh, on our platform, either themselves or through a managed provider. And a lot of customers, specifically businesses, have been asking us to provide native support for Kubernetes. So now this is native support uh, for Kubernetes on the DigitalOcean. What platform. does native support for customers mean specifically? Is it managing? the workload down to, how level, what level of granularity, I guess, is the question. Be specific about the yeah, support. Yeah, yeah. So, so essentially, um, typically developers who are de uh, deploying container workloads or Kubernetes workloads uh, do this themselves. Now we make it very, very easy. So you can come into our platform and within a few clicks, deploy a Kubernetes cluster with your typical integrations of monitoring or um, container registry and the Kubernetes so you dashboard. you basically just select a couple features and it's, they can go from there, it's, it's just ju it's run just and gun? It's just a few yeah. clicks <laughs> and you are, you, are, you are running. And the reason why we did that and sort of the history of the company is really focused on removing friction for developers to get started. So we make it very, very easy from a product experience perspective and also from a cost perspective. So we remove all the barriers for any team size to get started. And, um, and so that's why we've made the product very, very easy to use, very simple. Uh, and then we also plan to have a lot of tutorials around uh, containers or containerizing an application and scaling uh, in the microservices. That's world. great. Yeah. Talk about the security aspect of it. It's been a big topic here. We were talking about in our intro, Lauren and I, around, you know, that it's evolving in real time, yes. things are moving fast, upfront work needs to get done. Yep. How do your customers think about security in context of the Kubernetes off offering? Yeah, so we, we, are, we have a story for that. We are trying to essentially deploy some uh, native integrations, uh, some open source projects that help us do security scanning. So the goal is to essentially let our customers know of vulnerabilities that they may have based on the images um, that they are deploying. And you know, all of us are guilty of it. We will get a public container image and launch it and then realize that there are some security flaws. And so, so that's something we do want to address um, as we continue to roll out additional features throughout this year. I know we've interviewed you guys before, but I want you to just take a minute sure. and explain for the folks watching who might not know DigitalOcean, what you guys do, your value proposition, who you guys target, how you sell the product, was it the service, all that good stuff. Share a one minute update on what you guys do. Yeah, so we are a New York based company that were founded in uh, 2012 uh, out of Techstars and the, the value proposition is very simple in that we want to be the cloud platform for developers and their teams so that they are focused on um, software that changes the world. And what that means is we take all of the complexity in our product development process, essentially to make it very easy for a developer to go from concept or idea to production as fast as they can. Once they get there, we want to also enable them to scale reliably on our platform. And essentially, all of the features that we've launched have been driven by customer demand. So they tell us that, hey, we're scaling on your platform, we really need these additional features. And that's how we respond. So we are, we are very developer obsessed and focus on that specific persona uh, and help them uh, get to the cloud as quickly as so possible. So you're solving the problem for the developer. Pain, pain points are what? So there are three. Uh, we think of learning as the first one, as a barrier uh, to developers. So this is why we've built a library uh, of tutorials, about 1,400 plus tutorials. We get about three uh, million unique visitors on our platform. And about 80% of our customers actually came from one of the tutorials, right? So that's such a great source documentation of documentation. Documentation is so important. So important. So that's the first one. 
The second one is building. This idea of let's remove all friction for you to go from zero, uh, essentially an idea, to production as fast as possible. So there are two things we do there. One, we try to make the product very simple and easy to use. And two, uh, we are very price competitive. So we have uh, a very competitive price to performance ratio in the market. Uh, with the idea that if you want to keep your total cost of operations as low as possible. And so that's another reason why developers, teams, and also businesses are now, uh, we are in their consideration set because they're like, well, developers love this product and I can get a cost benefit, why would I not do that? Mm -hmm. And then the last one is scaling, which is uh, once, you, once you're growing your application, you're going to need uh, uh, ability to scale and support. And so we provide free support to all of our customers, regardless of the size of your workload mm -hmm. or um, size of customer or business. And I right. think that's a very um, important value proposition. So, so who do you compete customer. against? Like who are a couple of your competitors? So the, w the best way to answer that is to uh, see, um, is to go to our customers and see who they compare us with. And Got typically it. we are compared against AWS um, and okay. Google. Okay. Um, and so, they are the ones who will come to us and say, hey, we're about to um, launch an app or we're considering moving our workloads. You know, here's what uh, our setup looks like in Google or AWS. Um, you know, can you provide us uh, similar capabilities? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times tends to be, you know, our developers already love you. Uh, if you have these capabilities and feature set, we would love to move our workloads. Well, so I think that's, that's you've got a tremendous amount of active developers as well, correct? Yes, yes. So, and you're growing that exponentially. What is kind of your growth look like year over year? Yeah, so last year we signed um, uh, one, the one millionth developer on our platform. That's essentially one, one million developers have created an account on our platform. And we sometimes have developers that come in and out of our platforms if you're done with your projects, okay. if you're right, if you're a student. Uh, but we have about half a million active developers on our platform and growing rapidly. And um, and we also foster a community which is growing um, tremendously. So we have about three and a half million active developers in our communities, use, reading articles, and going through Q and A, um, and posting very interesting projects. Those are some great numbers. I mean, they're yes. up there with Salesforce growth. So yeah. that's that's tremendous. Yep. Yeah. You, and also, you, the other news is you're upgrading your membership Cloud Native Compute Foundation, CNCF. Talk about that dynamic. Why size? Did you fall into a new bucket? Or you guys are increasing your yep. participation? What's the, what's the news? Yeah, I mean, we've, we were founded really on this idea of we believe in uh, helping the community and so uh, free and open source software uh, is what we've built our, our business on. And so as we got active with um, Kubernetes ourselves, and we've been using Kubernetes for two years internally, so we've, we have lots of lessons of our own. And as we were bringing this product to market, uh, it was only the right—it was the right time for us to really upgrade our membership to gold um, with the CNCF and with the goal of getting to their platinum level, um, where we can contribute to standards uh, and bodies um, and really influence the the evolution of all the tooling around um, you know containers and and microservices. So this is the right. It was the timing was right, and it's the right evolution of us um, continuing to support the Making community. Making some good profit, contribute that, and, and help out CNCF. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. What's as the VP of product, you have the keys to the kingdom, as they say in the product <laughs> management world. You got to balance engineering management with product, and then you got to look to the market for the you know the needs of the customers. Of course, they're helping you. Uh, big time developers aren't afraid to share their opinion of what they Never. need. Yeah. Uh, pain points. So it's a good 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 to job there. What is on the roadmap for you? What's next? How are you looking at the um, short, mid, long-term evolution of DigitalOcean's uh, product strategy? Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll break it down in three different areas. The first part is really having a core, uh, complete feature set for a modern application uh, that's being built in the cloud. So this is where over the last 12 months we've developed, uh, we've deployed uh, de developed and deployed load balancers, cloud firewalls, object storage, block storage, um, a new control panel experience, uh, and a bunch of networking features that we have released. Uh, and so we have uh, some new features coming this year which allow you to do v uh, you know, the VPC feature specifically uh, that allows businesses to have private networking yep. and peering. That, that's been a, uh, 
um, top requested feature. Mm -hmm. So that that's something that's going to come later this year to round out our core platform. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, we have two uh, or three two or three different things we're doing. So the first category is just ha having a better developer experience. So this is everything from the experience you have when you are launching any cloud resource, whether it's for a control panel or API or CLI. So continue to make that frictionless. So we have a few updates coming there to a control panel, improvements to our API, and adding a bunch of integrations so that if you're using different products to manage your cloud infrastructure, we make that very, very easy. The second thing is um, marketplaces. So a lot of, as you know, lots of other providers have uh, marketplaces and different versions of marketplaces. Uh, a lot of our customers and vendors are now coming to us saying, you have a really big uh, audience and, and customer base. We really want to integrate our product so we can make it easy for them to spin up uh, those resources. So marketplaces is the second large category that we're working on uh, later this year. We'll have a lot of updates on that. And then the third one is tied to developer experience, but it's essentially the Kubernetes product that we're launching. Uh, we also have plans to enable marketplace-like integrations and a lot of the uh, CI, CD integrations so that okay. once, once you're uh, up and running with your cluster, mm -hmm. you got to get your yeah. CI, CD uh, pipelines and tooling uh, oh, working. So that's I want to ask you about multi-cloud mm -hmm. and where you guys are at with multi-cloud and kind of connecting to the other cloud providers that are competitors, but you know, your users are going to want to use as well as your solution. Yeah, this is where I think Kubernetes uh, fits really, really mm -hmm. well with the multi-cloud story for us, which is why sort of, uh, why now for us. Um, if your workloads are on Kubernetes, and this is why we're going to support all of the, the community, latest community versions uh, that are available, if your workloads are on Kubernetes, it becomes very easy for you to move those over uh, mm -hmm. to our platform, and so, I think we're going to see a combination of sometimes customers will have split workloads, sometimes they will run different types of workloads on our platform. Mm -hmm. And so I think Kubernetes really opens up that possibility to, um, to do that. Uh, there's still some more tooling to be done, but that's, that's essentially How many employees do you guys have now? What's the number? We are roughly north of 400. So cool. still very Congratulations, small. you Thank guys you. are a growing company. Great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks for sharing Thank the news. Thank you very much. You have a great job. Digital Ocean, you know, hot startup, growing rapidly. I'm sure they're hiring like crazy, so we go are. check them out. <laughs> uh, the news here at KubeCon is positive industry. Rising tide floats all boats. That's a philosophy we had, had seen on theCUBE in great ecosystems, of course, that's happening here. More live coverage here in Copenhagen, Denmark. After this short break, stay with us.